Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming by. Uh, my name is William Ye. I'm a senior director of product on the Data Cloud team. Uh, within Data Cloud, I kind of lead the platform integration accessibility of the product, so how Data Cloud works with the rest of Salesforce platform, how we light up different capabilities and flow, uh, enrichment, and others, as well as how we can extend our platform so you can create packages, work with metadata, and other platform capabilities. And so today we'll be talking about Data Cloud, what's new, and what's coming. So first of all, given the nature of the topic, and of course you've seen this slide quite a few times, but I just wanted to remind you all that um, we'll be sharing about a lot of the net new things that we're thinking about and also what's coming out soon. And so please only make your purchasing decisions based on what's currently available today. And with that also, uh, please, if you have a time, uh, give us some feedback. We want to hear from you. This session was actually added quite last minute. So you know, we kind of put this there, this session, uh, just less than, less than a week ago, we want to share with you what we're planning, as well as what we have in this coming spring release. But we want to hear from you on your feedback, what you'd like to learn more. And hopefully, next time, we'll speak to you in a longer session in, in a breakout room. And of course, thank you for being here. I know there's you know, lots going on, lots of different sessions. So we appreciate your time. And again, you know, we'd love to hear from you how, you how you feel. Developers and admins, you are the ones using Data Cloud and building with us. So we'd love to hear your feedback how we can improve, and what are the things that you'd love to see more from us. So with that, let's get started. So these are the four topics I prepared to talk to you all about today. Um, we'll start with data cloud flow enhancements. So in spring release, we added a, sorry, in the previous release, we added the data cloud trigger flow. And in spring, we made some additional enhancements. Uh, we also have 2GP enablement that we're preparing for spring release. So that's really exciting if you're building packages with us using data kits today. And also, we have a couple kind of forward-looking concepts that we are thinking about preparing and would love to share with you all where we're heading into. And so one is Sandbox. And the other is how we think about when you have multiple orgs using a data cloud. And so with that, let's get started with Flow. So I'll dive right in because we have a lot of content. And you know, uh, if you have any questions, I'll stay around for a bit afterwards to chat as well. Uh, oh. I just lost the slides. Sorry, a bit of a technical difficulty, but let me see all I can do. There we go. All right, so back to the slides. So first of all, uh, as I mentioned, we released Data Cloud Trigger Flow in the previous release. So that means within Flow, you can create a record trigger flow, just like you do today, except you're triggering it based on the data cloud records. Now, with Spring Release, we're actually adding the debugging capability. So this is really critical, right? Developers who use Flow before, they're familiar with the Flow debug capability, where you can feed in a record to run through the Flow, so you can kind of see how everything will execute and run, it, run against. And so we wanted to make sure that we have the same support for all the developers that we're supporting now to create Flow with us. And it's really easy to do as well. It's similar to how you would do today by going to the Flow Builder, clicking the Debug button, and then you can select a Data Cloud record. By selecting that single record, the Flow will run through step by step, and you can kind of see what is fed in, as, as well as the, the record that gets processed through. And also, the other part is actually uh, something I'm you know, really uh, excited about. So this is about sending data to Data Cloud. So now that you have the trigger flow, you can execute a flow based on the events of Data Cloud. How do you then get data back into Data Cloud? So with Spring Release, we added the support of in inserting data into Data Cloud using Flow. So how we do that is by using the Flow actions. And what that works is, essentially, if you have ingestion APIs set up today, those ingestion APIs will surface as flow actions automatically. That allows you to then configure new flows. Let's say you have a screen flow with some input fields. What you can do is, from that input field, execute a flow action and insert a record directly into Data Cloud. All with clicks. And so with that, I actually have a quick demo to show you how this works. Hi, everyone. This is William Ye, Product on Data Cloud. With Spring 24 release, I'm excited to show how Flow is bringing platform and data cloud together. In this demo, we will walk through how you can debug a data cloud trigger flow and also insert data into data cloud from a flow. 
So let's get started. In our last release, we introduced data cloud triggers. These act just like record trigger flows, except they are looking for changes on data cloud objects instead of objects in your CRM platform. In this flow, we are checking a lead object on data cloud and seeing if it's been updated as an employee referral. And then what this flow is going to do is to create a lead if it doesn't exist, then check with the owner and make a follow-up action for that owner to reach out to the employee who referred it. But what we can do now in the Spring 24 release is we can actually debug this. This was something we didn't have last time. And so we're going to select a data cloud record. And you can see all the data cloud records available for me to choose. Then we'll just pick an example that is an employee referral. When we hit run, we'll get the same debug experience that you're used to on Flow. So you can look at the entry conditions, check everything out, and make sure that it is what you expected, just like how you would do with a Salesforce object. But now let's take a look at how you can make changes to Data Cloud with Flow starting in Spring 24. So let's take a look at the different flow. In this screen flow, we will start by debugging it. And you can see this example exercise screen flow. This is just something we put together so you can add some details into a form. In this case, we'll just add details of an exercise that the user did. So let's say the user just finished a workout and burned some calories. Let's say they jogged a couple kilometers. And when we submit it, it is going to send that data directly to Data Cloud. So how does that work? So here we have this Data Cloud action and it captures all of that information to be sent to Data Cloud. But where did this come from? So in setup today, you can configure ingestion APIs for Data Cloud. This is how Data Cloud can ingest data on demand. And as you can see, we have quite a few different ingestion APIs configured here. That is because data could be structured very differently from object to object, from source to source. So in our example, we're capturing all the data like runs, calories, and workout data, that's very unique. And so if you see the list of different things here, for example, audit, exercise, messaging events, these are all just different sources that you can get data into Data Cloud, into those different object shapes. So now let's go back to the flow in my invocable actions. You're going to see that there's a new category called send to Data Cloud. And if I take a look at what's inside the section, you'll see that it's the same audit, exercise, messages, all those ingestion APIs that are automatically turned into invocable actions in Flow. All right, so that's a quick walkthrough of Flow. Um, I'm sure you'll get, to, you'll, you'll get start playing with it starting spring release, and you're looking forward to all the flows that we'll be creating. And so next, I want to switch over to something uh, slightly on a different altitude, second generation packaging. And so today, when you build with Data Cloud, we have actually IOC partners building solutions on the app exchange. And how they do that today is to use the same Salesforce packaging technology that you've used or are familiar with from our app exchange ecosystem. Uh, of course, you know, given the nature of Data Cloud being process driven with a data lake, we introduced a new concept of data kits. That is how you can add the different data cloud metadata, like data streams, your data models, your CI relationships into a kit to do deployment. But the actual mechanism, the vehicle, is still the same packaging that we've been using. Now, with Spring Release, we're actually adding more capabilities to data kit. So we're adding the support for streaming, batch transforms, uh, calculated insights, web mobile SDA bundles, ingestion API bundles and data connector framework. So all these things will be also available as part of data kit for it to be packaged. And the, the value of data kit itself, I think that's you know, worn a whole different session of its own, but it's really about the reusability and understanding of data cloud. Because data cloud is process driven, data cloud has introduced new concepts like data spaces, you need a way to be able to reuse some of these metadata so you can deploy them and use them in different places. Now, why am I talking about second generation packaging? Well, so today, uh, if you go with a st standard packaging flow, it's pretty linear, right? Uh, one GP, essentially, you have a single monolithic org where you have a namespace and you put everything into one. Uh, you can easily package all the data kit and deploy it on App Exchange and then further install that into your test orgs or you know, to your customer source. 
but it's not very flexible when it comes to development. And that's why we want to make sure we support second generation packaging. So 2GP, or second generation packaging, has been around and part of the platform for a few years now. This is one of the innovation that Salesforce developer experience, or SFDX, has been innovating on. We understand that developers want to be more source driven when they develop the packages. We want to make it easy for them to build with us and you know, using a more modern development <laughs> approach. And so that's why it's really critical for us to support 2GP as well. It did took us some time, but essentially, look, moving forward, uh, data kit will be packageable through 1GP and 2GP. Um, any net new features we onboard on data kit will also support both approaches. Of course, we understand that developers might still want to use 1GP for certain cases because it's easy to use, it's points not click, not code. But of course, if you need a power user situation where you need to collaborate with multiple developers, multiple dev environments, or uh, scratch orgs, that's where you will go in for 2GP. And so with that, that means you know, essentially you can kind of go with a more modern development approach. right? Instead of having single developer org where you put the package in, try to test it out in the test org, and hopefully ship that out, you can actually have multiple developers working in multiple environments together before they uh, commit the final changes and release the package. And so uh, I'll skip through the demo given the time today, but we do have a blog post that just got published yesterday to go into an in-depth, step-by-step example on how you can create a 2GP with data cloud uh, data kits. And I do want to save some time for us to talk about uh, two kind of the newer topics that we've been thinking about. So one is data cloud sandbox. This is something I've been hearing from a lot of uh, customers and partners. Um, I think you know, in some ways the feature doesn't need introduction, but I do want to talk about how we're thinking about this and what we're looking at. And so first of all, sandbox, right? So in my opinion, Salesforce has set a pretty high bar when it comes to sandbox, right? It's really easy for you to set up a sandbox or test environment today. You just go into your production environment, go into setup, and you can create a new sandbox org, which will replicate all your configurations, metadata, and also uh, some, of, some or most of your, your data. And so it's really easy for you to work with uh, Salesforce sandboxes. It's a trusted environment because it's isolated. You can make changes in there without having any concern of messing up your production environment. And of course, uh, once you're done, you can make deployments back to your production. Right? That's the proper application, application lifecycle management that most businesses want. And so when you think about sandboxes, because of how complete it is, you have a wide range of use cases that you can help. Right? You can use it for kind of training, product support, getting someone to try a new feature that you're onboarding on. You can use it for development purposes. You can use it for testing purposes or you can use it for implementation purposes. So it's really a wide range of use cases that Sandbox can be used for today. And that's why it's really uh, important, also not an easy task for us to kind of figure out how Data Cloud should be working and should be supporting our customers. But th with that being said, we do plan to support Sandboxes. So news today is we're, we're planning to start piloting Data Cloud and Sandbox in the summer release. And with that, what we mean is Data Cloud will be working in the same sandboxes that you have today, right? Uh, because we don't want to create a new category. We don't want to kind of split this up. Data Cloud is part of the Salesforce platform, and that is really a critical piece for all the other innovations we're making, right? With GPT, with GenAI, with other uh, Salesforce Cloud that's building on top of Data Cloud. So we want to make sure that Data Cloud can be uh, functional within all of your sandboxes, whether it's dev, Dev Pro, partial, or full copy sandboxes. However, uh, how we're thinking about data cloud sandboxes, we will make sure when you provision, your metadata and configurations are replicated automatically in those sandboxes. And we'll give you a way to decide what are the data that you want to re ingest into data cloud. Because data cloud, as a data lake with exponential data, it's not an easy task for you to just say, hey, I want to bring all my data over again. And so we want to give customers this flexibility. Some customers in Regulated industries might want to use synthetic data in their sandboxes. Some customers might want to use test data. If you're just testing the flow that I showed you earlier, you only need a few hundred rows of data really to trigger a flow and see how things go through. So we're essentially going to let you reconfigure the source to say, hey, am I using the same production data or am I going to ingest you know, different sources of data? And of course, as I mentioned, a big part of sandbox is also the ability to merge or deploy your changes back to production. And so we do plan to support DevOps Center 
possibly through some of the path that you need to go through with data kits. So we'll have more details on that as we get closer to pilot and also uh, as kind of we lead in up into uh, Dreamforce. So be on the lookout for this. This is something that we're quite excited for, but it does take quite some time to do. But just to quickly, I guess, summarize on the sandbox part, how we're thinking about how you'll be getting access to it, you will start by the same path. So you'll go to your setup within your production org. If you have data cloud and you know, in the pilot case, you have to access the pilot, when you create a new sandbox or you, when you refresh the sandbox, data cloud will be provisioned in that sandbox org and will be bringing over your configurations, uh, you know, your data streams, your calculated insights, your resolution rules, all, all those configurations will be available. And then what you will do is then you go back to set the connections, because we won't be carrying over your security, your tokens, your authentication. That is where you go back and say, hey, I want to reestablish re this connection. And once you do, the stream will be ingesting the data into Sandbox. Of course, you can also create any streams if you wish to, to use that for that purpose. All right, so with the last few minutes, I do want to talk about another kind of forward-looking uh, topic that we had, which is multi-org with data cloud. And so let's start from the current state today. Right? So today, data cloud is part of your org. Right? When you create an org or in your operating org today with data cloud, data cloud is, is right there with it. So you can use it you know, the same way as how you do for any other uh, clouds of our products. So let's say you, know, you can use our data explorer to look at the actual data in data cloud. You can create flow against it because the data model object is, is available. You can uh, do enrichment, like adding related lists, because again, the data model object is available in that same org. However, we understand that for customers, many of our customers, they don't have just a single org. Right? They have lots of orgs, you know, 1, 5, 10, 50, you name it. And the whole point of data cloud and single source of truth is often you want to make sure the data is centralized. Sure, you might have you know, different data cloud for region or business purposes, but if you have 50 orgs, you don't want to have 50 data cloud. You want to have that one single source of truth to centralize it. And so how do we solve that? Right? In the current state, you need to do some implementation and in integration. Right? Either you make API calls using Apex, or you use Flow to listen to uh, data action platform events. Right, from, from your main org to kind of pass those events to the other. But these are all really implementation and integration steps. So how do you solve uh, this problem natively? How do you make sure that you can use the same data cloud, that you have unified or data, but uh, within the different orgs that you need to run your business in? Oh, so, th so this is the problem statement that we're trying to solve for. So looking into the future, we have a new concept that we're currently working on. Uh, that we're calling the remote data cloud. And so how we're thinking about this is, today, when you have multiple CRM orgs, all you're doing is ingesting data into data cloud. But we want to do a lot more than that. We will actually want to have an actual connection between data cloud and uh, be between your core org and our data lake you know, across multiple instances. So what that would mean is, essentially, you can surface objects from your main data cloud org in the other connected org as well. So how we will do this is, of course, you need to first establish a connection, but this time it's bi-directional. It's not just getting the data in. And what we would do is kind of using the data space as a unit to help say, hey, make this data space available in another org. What that would entail me is the data models, the, the metadata will be synced over to your production environments in these subsequent orgs. And so this would allow you to do a lot more use cases. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to create flows in, in this separate org that doesn't have data cloud provision because you provision your main org, but because you have the connection and you have the metadata sync and the object available, you can create flow against it. You can also do related lists, reports, all the operation that you would expect to be able to do in that same org, but with a single data cloud instead of creating individual data cloud for each org that you're working on. So this is something that's really new that we're uh, currently working on. We're looking at initial pilot targeting around summer time frame as well, kind of May, June. So be on the lookout for that. And of course, we'll have more information on this as well leading up to Dreamforce. Also with that, you know, it's a really speed run through session. Obviously, I'd love to have more time to talk to you all. So um, I'll, I'll stay, stay around to answer any questions afterwards. And you know, please give us the feedback. And we'd love to hear more from you afterwards. Thank you.